So there is clearly, clearly something going on in the background, uh, certainly in and around Brexit. Because today we're going to go and cover something, a, a website really until today I had never heard of before. So over here, you can see we've got a website called uh, 1828. And 1828 is essentially, in reality, a front for the Institute of Economic Affairs. And of course, the Institute for Economic Affairs, if you may remember, in the past, we've talked about Tufton Street and, of course, big lobbying companies that like to sort of push that ideology uh, along. Obviously, uh, they were heavily involved with the Trust Administration, but for years have been very, very much driving the free market fundamentalist side, certainly, of the Conservative Party. And 1828 is essentially, if anything, is more a front. It's like, we're not part of the, the IEA, but here's a little think piece that maybe one of the IEA contributors has, has written <laughs> that we're just happening to publish. So this is an absolute complete front. But also, you're going to hear the terms classical liberalism and libertarianism thrown around. And especially the term classical liberal is really, it, it basically means right wing, <laughs> essentially. Um, obviously, probably the most infamous classical liberal on online really is one a, one Carl Benjamin, aka Sargon of Akkad. Um, certainly is a right winger, although he will deny it, but he will spout off right wing talking points and agree with them completely. And I think now he's even sort of just given it in, like say his new uh, sort of news outlet, the Lotus Eaters pretty much says, yes, we are the home of conservative talking points, but still claims to be quote, a classical liberal. But it's fascinating here that you have a piece saying that classical liberals and libertarians should admit that Brexit has been a catastrophe. Because the all the arguments for leaving the European Union are libertarian ones, that we shouldn't have regulations, that we should be free to do whatever you know we want to do, have less regulations, less laws, and have more, quote, the sovereign individual, as Jacob Rees-Mogg would often say, and quote. But yeah, we're going to go into this today because this is fascinating from certainly a political point of view, but also certainly points to potentially some interesting things going on. Um, certainly in the sort of Brexit side of the movement. We've talked before that there have been some rumblings and splits between the pro-Brexit factions. So could this be more part of it? Certainly seems to be. But yeah, um, like I say, we'll uh, we'll go diving into this and get into this then. So uh, before we do go uh, diving into this, please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and one station link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And of course, there is the uh, YouTube thank you button as well. And of course, the Pony Club link as well. So off we go to uh, 1828 to cover this. So with their title of classical liberals and libertarians should admit that Brexit has been a catastrophe. Hmm. With few exemptions, classical liberals and libertarians were strongly in favour of Brexit. As we said at the beginning. And he continues, some among our number had been on the front lines of the battle against the European integration since the, rat the ratification of the Maastricht Treaty, and for them, Brexit represented the culmination of an uphill struggle against the centralisation, the bureaucratic supremacy of Brussels and its regulatory overreach. For a long time, Brexit was a, qu was a niche topic, articulated almost exclusively by those right-wing liberals. The likes of Daniel Hannan, what a surprise <laughs> if his name comes up, uh, Douglas Carwell, and liberal Brexiteers must now, however, face up to the simple truth. Theirs was not the vision that won the 2016 EU referendum. Hmm, interesting, <laughs> very interesting. So, like I say, this whole idea that we would become the Singapore on the Thames, which is really what they're, they're really talking about. That's the version they were pushing. That's what uh, certainly Liz Truss really wanted to push 
and was heavily got a lot of these think tanks behind her in pushing that idea. Like I say, back when she was putting out her big, you know, <laughs> the big, you know, um, budget from her and sort of Kurzy Katang, um, a lot of the institutes were putting out the big think pieces saying, you know, this is a fantastic budget. This is amazing. Oh my God. This is, you know, the truest of true conservative budgets ever released. Um, that was the type of stuff that they were putting out. So back to it. Vote Leave director Dominic Cummings recognized that the key to success for Brexiteers lay in the left behind areas of the country whose discontent could be channeled into disdain for the European Union. Interesting that that's, you know, a good admission there. Um, so, as we've said before, the EU was never the problem for these people. And now that you've decided to channel that disdain into the European Union, lots of people are re recognizing, oh, actually, the EU wasn't the fault. This is why we've seen, even in the North East, an area that voted very heavily for Brexit, the opinions on that 2016 vote are turning very, very rapidly. You know, we've been seeing this very, very recently that the polls are turning against Brexit very, very dramatically. But back to it. Most of these voters did not long for a bonfire of red tape or an end to the common agricultural policy. For most of these voters, Brexit was a rebellion against globalization and immigration, the forces which they feel had left them behind. And again, I can agree with that, although I wouldn't say it's, quote, globalization. I'd say it's certainly more sort of capitalism that certainly left them behind in those areas. And certainly immigration, when you look at the data, um, immigration was not a negative on these areas it was very much an argument that had been used by people like Nigel Farage because Nigel Farage would run around saying look at all these immigrants taking your jobs when you look at the numbers you look at the data certainly wasn't the case but back to it the Conservative Party's 2019 campaign in which Cummings had a significant involvement also recognized this Having been given the opportunity to park their tanks on Labour's front lawn by the left's desire to frustrate Brexit, Boris Johnson was powered uh, into a landslide victory by the so-called Red Wall voters. These voters, mostly from the North and the Midlands, have become the predominant swing voters in British elections that will have seen the liberalism that has been wrought in Westminster. The Conservative Party under Boris Johnson, Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak has been petrified of cutting public spending and even become less likely to undertake the necessary slaughter of the socially sacred cow that is the NHS. So you can just see where this has come from. They are like, yeah, we just need to completely get rid of the NHS. So that is an open admission that this website, as we've said, just basically wants to fully kill off the NHS. Um, yeah, <laughs> as we said before, this is these people's ultimate goal. So the party has instinctively turned to taxes and borrowing to keep our, unsta on our unsustainable economy on life support, even to the extent of imposing windfall taxes on energy profits during an acute energy shortage. Um, yeah, windfall taxes will not affect energy energy uh, flow and production. That affects nothing. Absolutely not. That is a, a completely bogus argument. Um, and again, we have taxes. That there, there are places the Tory party could tax, and even the left makes continuous points of places we should tax and look at raising taxes on, where the Tory party dare not even tread. Uh, because that's their, obviously, core even more bread and butter. But back to it. So the Labour Party, under its new leadership, has slid further into the illiberal abyss, with Sir Keir Starmer abandoning Jeremy Corbyn's um, pledge to decriminalise drugs whilst parroting the right-wing talking points on cheap labour and reviving the chilling prospect of a universal ID to improve the party's standing among immigrants, immigration skeptics. So, first of all, let's let's go along with this. Decriminalizing drugs. Um, it's a constant argument. It's a constant back and flow. Um, 
I really think, to be honest, it certainly should happen. You know, you look at the the countries and even states in America that have done this, it is being proved to be not only a, a massive success in many places, take Portugal is a classic example uh, of where we talk about decriminalizing this, but also in the places that have turned that into a source of revenue, it's proving really, really good. Really, really good. Uh, parroting the quote right wing talking points on cheap labor. Uh, right, uh, cheap labor is not just a um, <laughs> a right wing talking point. It was the right wing who stole this from the left wing, who've said it for years, "Look, we do not want to be exploited by you paying us, you know, peanuts while you make billions off our labor." That has been the left wing talking point for years. <laughs> And then, of course, the universal ID. This isn't a an immigration argument. This is more the fact that the conservatives themselves have brought in this new voting law and said that they themselves were going to issue a massive universal ID so that everyone could have an ID card, so that no one would be left out for voting. Um, and, of course, they haven't done that. They've, they've dropped it. So Labour have come along and said, oh, okay, universal ID then. If you're going to have ID for um for the for these um you know elections then universal ID is the basic core point to make sure that everyone has ID and that you know no one has to essentially pay for the ID which basically they are really asking for at the moment so back to it so there is no doubt that Brexit could have been a new dawn for Britain Let's see what the new dawn could be Controlling our trade and customs regime will allow us to radically pursue global free trade. Again, how? C control control the customs regime and do what exactly <laughs> it is? Would it be putting tariffs to zero, I, I, perchance? <laughs> Controlling our regulatory uh, regime gives us the opportunity to boost competitiveness. Um, again, what exactly do you want to get rid of to boost competitiveness? Um, exiting the common agricultural policy could allow us to bring long overdue uh, specialization into our farming sector. Um, you could absolutely specialize. Lots of farms already did under the common agricultural policy. Uh, there was nothing stopping them from doing that. Um, like I say, and now lots of farmers want to go back to that because, again, the Brexiteers promised to replace those payments. And instead, they have completely continuing to not only replace those payments, but the, the very program they wanted to bring in to replace those payments, they seem to have scrapped completely. But back to it. This is not, however, the vision that is being delivered. So far from the diminishing state, uh, control of our lives. Brexit has not only served to replace Brussels bureaucrats with Whitehall bureaucrats. Liberal Brexiteers may argue that these uh, this represents progress because our bureaucrats are more accountable to us. But I think that misses the point. All democracies, particularly those like Britain, which use first-past-the-post electoral systems, are prone to making their institutions disproportionately accountable to select few politically important constituencies. As discussed, the views of the Brexit supporting former Labour voters in the North and the Midlands provide a benchmark by which both parties judge their success, and consequently, the direction of travel in Whitehall is profoundly an illiberal one. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Voters don't want our crazy economic, crazy libertarian worldview? Shock horror. <laughs> Shock horror. Bear in mind, as we've talked about before, they are not actually really mentioning, once again, but they talk about, oh yes, we want to you know, control of our, our regime, we want to get rid of all these uh, regulations, well, okay, what exactly is it you want to do? It's great you, 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 you say that, whatever, but what exactly is it you want to do? And of course, we never ever get that, because that's where all the completely crazy, wacky stuff, like we've heard for years of dropping our tariffs to zero for everyone and everything somehow would make Britain an amazing bastion of free trade, getting rid of 
you know, things like work, the working time directive so that companies can just come in and force workers to work as long or as, as long as they want. Yeah, perfect, guys. Um, again, no one wants these things. Unfortunately, we are very, very much um, like a lot of these uh, regulations. It's just, unfortunately, these guys are a very, very, very tiny minority but unfortunately have very powerful positions, certainly in the government, and very, very deep pockets to be able to push their agenda. Like I say, they've already admitted in this article they want to get rid of the NHS. So, back to it. Uh, Liberal at Tears may argue that it is ins inscrutably good to control more of our own affairs. Eurosceptics in the Labour Party, such as Tony Benn and Jeremy Corbyn, focus their arguments on the EU's democratic deficit, and their arguments have been echoed by the Liberal Brexiteers like Daniel Hannan. But is that really a Liberal outlook? Regardless of where you stand on the Liberal or Libertarian spectrum, we should all expect that the states of democracy are not, are not goods in themselves, but means to an end. Restrictions imposed on the British government should be welcomed by liberals and libertarians if they promote the cause of free markets and individual liberty, irrespective of the process employed to, in to enact those restrictions. So again, they want complete and utter free, um, unfettered, you know, companies should be able to do whatever they want. The government should have no say, no regulations whatsoever and complete unfettered individual liberty, which basically means if you've got the cash to do it, then you can do it. You know, hang everyone else because they haven't got the cash to do it. Um, like I say, this is not a world people really want to live in. <laughs> so, back to it. Uh, for all its faults, the EU imposed some sensible mandates on the government. It strictly limited uh, state aid to prop up uh, failing uh, failing companies, it enabled uh, free movement of goods, capital, and entrepreneurs and labor throughout the uh, ECJ. It required our legal system to observe a very high standard of due process under the law. We have sacrificed all these mandates and the ec economic uh, benefits of EU membership. And what have we got in return? Sadly, the answer is very little. Liberal Brexiteers should admit our mistake. We should concede that Brexit has been and will continue to be an illiberal pursuit. And of course, here you are, Institute for Economic Affairs, written for a, again, a meant to be a separate Labour owned piece by the, by them. Um, yeah. It's, it's fascinating that even they're admitting that their grand plan to turn the UK into the Singapore on the Thames has essentially failed. And I, I'm really glad that their project is failing because, like I say, no one wanted, no one would have ever voted for their crazy values. Imagine for a second, if the Leave campaign, if if they had gotten their way and said, oh yeah, once we're out of the of the EU, um, we're going to abolish the NHS and turn it into, you know, private. You now have to pay for your health care. Do you think... Brexit would have stand even a minuscule chance of winning. No, it absolutely would never have won. And if the if these if if I think that the Remain campaign had really forced these people to actually say, what do you mean by getting rid of regulations? What do you mean by this? and really started to hold their feet to the fire and start to take the conversation away from them and say, oh, actually, this is what they mean by this, and really start to just question them live on air. Like, they say, oh, yeah, they want to get rid of legislation, so they want to get rid of workers' rights, all these holiday protections, and then you could have had a massive thing on them saying, no, 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 that's what they're saying. They want to get rid of these regulations because there are tons of articles, things like this, all over the line of all stuff that happened pre-2016 of these, you know, well, the, you know, these quote classical liberals saying how much they want to get rid of workers' rights because it's holding back the country. And you know, yeah. It's it's an insane worldview uh, to get in, but it's one that would never ever fly. It would one that would absolutely 
never ever fly in the UK in a month of Sundays. Like I say, Liz Truss seemed to want to try and, and go that way and force the country into that way. And of course, you saw the massive, massive reaction, not only just from the markets, but even her own party. Because it really just goes to show you how small a faction, very luckily indeed, how small a faction these libertarians really were in the Conservative Party. But unfortunately, they were really, really powerful. So they're a small minority, but they hold a lot of power. And they are still there, very much so, in the Conservative Party. They might be damaged, but they are certainly licking their wounds to try again. And they will absolutely try again at some point. So, as always, uh, thank you very much, guys, like I say, for watching. Uh, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button on your way out. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and one of the station link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.